This session is going to be build your first command bot using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Gary Trinder. I'm a senior cloud developer advocate at Microsoft, and I'm focused on Microsoft 365. Lots of links in, in this uh, slide. If you want to get in touch with me with any questions after this session, or you know, just uh, check out the things that I've been doing and sharing. Uh, loads of links on there please do uh, check them out and you know if you have any questions please do not hesitate to uh, to just get in touch with me i'll do everything that i can to uh, to help you out okay just a quick uh, agenda uh, so um first i'm going to go through what's a command bot i'm going to cover quickly teams toolkit for visual studio code for those who don't know what it is i'm going to step through then creating this first project quick overview of, of what has been created for that project, running a bot for the first time, so we're going to see it in action. And then I'm going to go back through the code and explain how it works in the way that it does, um, and also then show you how you can implement new commands um, before we wrap up with uh, a summary and some resources for you to uh, basically get started building uh, bots using uh, the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. Uh, and I'd really love to know what you build after this. Um, so let's start with what is a command bot. So a command bot is something that is useful to repeat repetitive commands through a conversational interface. So let's say you just want to go into Teams, ask a bot to I don't know, send an email to your boss. You can instruct that bot through a command and run some logic. That is as simple as I could probably put it. There'll be lots of different use cases, um, but that is essentially it. You have a bot with several commands that you can invoke and then get a response. We're going to build this going through this session today using Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. So for those who are not aware of uh, Teams Toolkit, Teams Toolkit Visual Studio Code is a, an extension that you can install for the marketplace, which uh, enables you to uh, create new projects really quickly uh, for uh, Microsoft Teams apps. Um, it sets up debug and also has lots of features in there for publishing that app as well to your store and also to Azure. There's also a Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio, just to make you aware. Uh, so if you're a .NET developer, that's something that might interest you. I'm not going to cover it today, but we'll cover it in, in other sessions. Um, so for today, we're going to be focused on JavaScript and TypeScript uh, as the technology that we're going to use. You'll be glad to know that is the end of the slides, really, for now. Um, we're going to jump into Visual Studio Code, and I'm actually going to show you things um, running. So let's uh, begin. So uh, like I mentioned, we're going to use Teams Toolkit Visual Studio Code. Quick way of installing that, we can go to the extensions pane in Visual Studio Code. We can simply look for Teams Toolkit. We'll return in the results. You can click Install. That's it. It'll install in a matter of seconds. When it has installed, you'll get the Teams uh, icon in the sidebar. Click that. You can open the Teams Toolkit and you're going to get the options uh, immediately uh, to create a new project because we're just in, a, in an empty uh, Visual Studio Code window here. There's some also some samples that you can take advantage of uh, as well. So um, if you're looking for ideas, check out the samples and you can install those uh, as well and, and run them. So let's create a new Teams app. Uh, we've got very, several capabilities that we can add to our app. So we've got bots, we've got tabs, and we've got message extensions as well. Um, so we're going to concentrate on the command bot for now. So let's select command bot. Um, I mentioned we've got uh, JavaScript and TypeScript support for um, the programming language that you want to use. I'm going to use TypeScript and I'm just going to select a folder on my machine for where we're going to actually create this uh, this project. So I'm going to give it a name, call it community call, and that has started the scaffolding of the project. And in fact, it's done. It's nice and quick. So let's just take a quick run over uh, as to uh, what's actually been created here. So let's go through the folders. So we've got an FX folder in here. There's some configuration files. Um, so these are used by Teams Toolkit. As, as part of um, some of the uh, uh, the features that it, it, it uses to uh, 
launch bots really quickly uh, against your uh, developer tenant. We've got a VS Code folder, so this contains debug profiles. So this enables us to uh, basically use F5 in Visual Studio Code to launch our bot and open a web browser and and, and test it out really quickly. Uh, and also the debug profiles, so you can actually put breakpoints in code as well and then follow that code execution, which is really, really useful. Um, we have our bot folder, which is where our, our logic uh, is held for the bot that we're going to create. I'll jump back into that for a second. We'll just skip to templates folder. So these templates folders, are uh, it contains two types of, of templates. So one, we've got a template for our app manifest that we publish to Teams. And we've also got an Azure uh, folder, which provides us with templates, uh, bicep templates that we can use to deploy and provision uh, all the resources that are needed uh, to, uh, to have this running in the cloud uh, and not running on our local machine. So Toolkit provides all of that for us, which is really, really great. Skip into the uh, the bot folder. So here we've got our source code. Um, in here we've got some command handlers. We've got some adaptive cards and some internal files where uh, Toolkit has already set up things like uh, configuring our bot um, and, uh, and and wiring up the app IDs, app passwords, handling all that complexity for us. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to jump and I'm going to show you the bot actually running and then we'll come back and I'll jump into these individual files to just explain how the functionality that I show you uh, is uh, uh, is implemented uh, in this project. So I'm just going to jump to a project that I've already created. Just quickly jump back. So here's one that I've, I've already created. I've already hit F5. Um, so when you hit F5, Teams Toolkit is going to do a number of um, uh, activities for you. Um, it's going to check and make sure that everything on your machine is uh, good and valid. So you've got um, a, a supported node version. Um, you've got everything installed on your machine, like the NPM packages that are needed, um, as well as connecting to your Microsoft 365 tenant. So I'm going to show you that I've already connected to my Microsoft 365 tenant. Uh, if I look at the Teams Toolkit tab, so I've already signed in. It's telling me that side loading is enabled, which is something that we need to be enabled on the tenant uh, to, uh, to basically launch our app and, uh, and, and, and test it. And um, so this is enabled by default. If you're using a sandbox, uh, tenant from the developer program, if you're not, uh, this might be something that you need to configure yourself. So it's a setting in the team's admin center that you just need to go and switch. Um, there might be a slight delay uh, before that, uh, becomes enabled. Um, but, uh, once that's been done, you don't have to redo that again for that, uh, for that tenant. So I've already signed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, the uh, the bot. Um, we've got some profiles there for Chrome and Edge. I'm going to run this in Edge. Uh, so I can hit the run and debug button, or I can just hit F5 on my keyboard. And it'll do the same thing. So let's run it. So this is going to run by quite quick. But what this is doing, Teams Toolkit, is it's checking all those prerequisites. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, it's checking for Node, it's checking our 365 account, it's checking for the NPM packages. It's also checking and installing NGROC as well, which is uh, needed uh, for, um, for tunneling. So um, you don't have to pre-install that. Um, you don't have to uh, do anything with NGROC. Uh, Teams Toolkit Visual Studio Code will install it for you and uh, launch it um, as well in the background. So now this has launched. We've got Teams uh, opened in the web browser, and we will get the, uh, the, the app loading pane. So we've got different places where we can install this. We can start into a team or a chat or actually into a meeting as well. So if you want to have a um, a bot that is available in a meeting for people to uh, kind of make uh, you know, uh, invoke commands in, then you can uh, you can add this this bot uh, to those meetings. I'm just going to add it as a personal app at the moment, so it's just installed for for my user. Um, you can probably see there's some usage of it already um but this is what a command bot is uh, if you go to the the text box the 
the bot provides certain commands so out of the box we've got a hello world command and we get this nice suggestion um as well from from the ui so if you've got multiple commands you'll have a, a nice list here and as you're typing um the uh, the different commands that have got available to you it will provide you with the one that that matches uh, your your message and what i can do is i can just invoke this i can just send the message to the bot and in this example when we send hello world uh, it will reply with an adaptive card and also it will uh, reply with the uh, i think yeah it replies with the uh, the text as as well in there uh, with using adaptive cards, you've got the ability to add actions as well. Um, so these are just buttons that go to URLs at, at the moment. But you can imagine if you want to invoke a, uh, a, a command that maybe has a form or you want to send uh, some information somewhere, this is a, 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 you know, a use case of using a, uh, a command bot. You're just invoking some functionality uh, by, by sending the bot a, a message. So I'm going to quickly jump back to Visual Studio Code now, and let's take a look at the code um, to show you how this is all set up. So first, I'm going to go to the internal folder and go to the initialize file. Now, this is where our bot is defined. So um, like I mentioned that our bot has been uh, set up for us by Teams Toolkit. Uh, it's gone away to the bot framework service. It's registered a bot in that service as well. It's pulled the ID and the password for us um, and basically it injected that into this, this, this new uh, object. What we've also got is further configuration. So we, there's a command property uh, that allows you to include different handlers. So uh, a handler would be a handler for a particular message that comes in. If we take a look at the hello world command handler, which has been created for us, we can see that there is a, a class hello world command handler, which is uh, in implementing a uh, an interface from Teams FX. And Teams FX is a SDK that's basically providing us with a layer of abstraction over the bot framework. It's making it easy for us to, um, to create new commands using this uh, TeamsFX class. So one of the things that this class allows us to do is it allows us to define the trigger patterns. So if there is a message sent to this bot that matches this string, it will run the handle command received function and that will be where our logic uh, will uh, will will fire so this trigger pattern actually uh, it can accept a string but it can also accept regex as well so you can have you know a command that could be fired by different uh, uh, different words uh, at different times um, so it can be really uh, flexible if we just take a quick look at the handle command received function, so we can see that we're logging out that the bot received a message. So we do actually get the message back if we take a look at that. So we can see the actual text that was sent to us and also matches as well. So let's say, for instance, I did hello world and a name at the end. We're able to pick out the different values that have been sent through on that command. So you could you know, easily have a command that uh, accepts a, uh, a parameter and then use that within your logic. So the next thing that this bot does is that it's actually going to send an adaptive card uh, back. And the way that it does that is that it can use this uh, message builder from uh, Teams FX again. Um, and we have a attach adaptive card method where we can pass in our uh, hello world adaptive card and some data with it as well. So we have this uh, variable uh, here um, with title and a body. And we're going to send that to um, our bot along with the adaptive card 
a definition which is held in this JSON file here. So we can see that we have placeholders for title and for body, and we've also got actions in there to open URLs in Teams. Um, so there's various different actions that are available in adaptive cards. So you can have execute for, for forms as well. Um, but this example is just using open URL uh, for the moment. So this might be great for, let's say, I don't know, a Q&A bot. Uh, you want to ask a question, you get a response, you have some buttons provided uh, that take you to a documentation page. People can then find their, their answers from. So if we look at the implementation of these, so we've we've got uh, our handler. Um, our handler knows that it is triggered by a particular pattern. Uh, in this case, hello world. One thing that we did see was we had suggestions. So when I went to the uh, the text box, or the compose box, it actually came up and said, "Oh, here are some suggested commands that you can uh, that you can use." So those are defined actually in the app manifest template. So if we go to templates, uh, app packages, and manifest template.json, we have here a command list um, array. And in there, there is a, a, a commands array is where we can define our commands that are available. And so this, this list here, this array, is the list of commands that you want to be able to show uh, the user of your bot um, a quick examples of you know, what messages can you send and what functionality is going to pr be provided. So you can just simply add in new ones and new handlers. Just add in a title and a description. And then when that next gets uploaded to um, the teams, that will be available as a new suggestion. So if you're wanting to, let's say, implement new command, then the way that you would do that is you would update those uh, two different locations um, in um, in in our source folder. So first we would come to initialize. We would add our new handler in here, something like this. And we would actually create a new class that implements from the uh, TeamsFX bot command handler, and we'd add in the trigger patterns, add in the handle command received, and then that would be picked up and that would be a new command that users would be able to, to use. So the way that um, Team Toolkit has provided us with really the, the, the basics of how do we register new commands, how do we invoke commands, what the suggestions are available to, to users, and how do we you know, how do we send data back to the user is is all handled quite nicely through this command handler and through the handle command received function um, and using the attach adaptive card method to then send you know a nice ad adaptive card back if we didn't want to send an adaptive card we can also just send text so we have something called the turn context which is provided for us and we can send an activity back which can just contain plain text so we can actually keep sending messages as well um, so as part of you know the uh, the functionality of this command uh, you could just have you know single line messages and then provide an adaptive card um, as well for for users to to actually follow okay so that really covers the basics of getting started with a command bot so let me just quickly jump back to my slides. So I just wanted to to really summarize uh, kind of what we what I'd shown. Um, so you know, command bots are a great way of being able to automate those repetitive tasks through that conversational interface. So you know, rather than having a button on a page 
maybe something that's a bit more interactive like a bot um that you can use as you know maybe like your personal assistant to just say you know bot do a particular action um that's that's a great way of being in, being able to implement that and it's the starting point as well for you know uh, a q and a bot um, a more advanced conversational bot adding um cognitive services like lewis as well um to really kind of enhance that but it, at its basic uh implementation level it's a user is inputting something that the bot is then reacting to with some you know certain logic whether that is displaying uh, information through an adaptive card or actually capturing information uh, back as well um so I've shown you Teams Toolkit has provided the quickest way to get started developing certainly these command bots and, and just Teams apps uh, in general. You should, I showed you how quickly uh, and easily it was to just create that initial project and then get that running um, as well using F5. Um, and also that Teams FX is providing this layer of abstraction to simplify working with the bot framework. So you were able to just create a single handler um, and define the trigger pattern um, that would invoke the logic in that command um, and then how that was wired up with the the bot definition as well um, and you know again team store kit is kind of handling a lot of the complexities there just making it really easy so you can focus on what your uh, command needs to do so resources so there's plenty of resources on docs so definitely check out teams toolkit overview um so whether you are interested in the visual studio code extension or even the visual studio enhancement as well um then definitely check out that page so everything is uh, provided on there with some quick starts um, about creating a, a new teams app um, there's also more on Teams uh, FX SDK, so um, that is on GitHub. Um, definitely check out the uh, repository and the uh, docs. Um, there's lots of information down there and samples as well um, uh, about you know how you can take this further, extra things that you can do with the uh, the, the command handlers. And finally, just want to say thank you very much. Um, I think we jump into the questions. I can see Victor's uh, already in there. Uh, there's lots of activity in there. So I don't know if there's anything that hasn't been answered. I'm just quickly jumping back through. I think um, most of it's already answered. There's a couple like more governance questions yeah. like around, you know, how to manage this these many bots. And there was one about moving from dev to prod. And I, th I think Victor is actually communicating some of the you know communicating answers to some of that or at least give some suggestions yeah i think i found one question from scott are there enterprise supported options not to use in ngrok so i would say that as um you may be working for an organization that can't use ngrok so at the moment there isn't um in the visual studio code extension um it is very opinionated in that it uses ngrok however it is on the roadmap to use other uh, tunneling services uh, so this is something that, that definitely the team are aware of and are actively working to uh, to provide an alternative um but at the moment uh, yeah if you're using the visual studio code um version uh it, it's tied to uh ngrok gary i think there's two other interesting questions the first one uh, i partially answered but uh, it was uh, about where do you place the logic for your command bot if you just don't want to show that card but you want to have some business logic or whatever where would you do do that and the second one is uh, do we require azure app services to run this how how's everything being set up essentially so i can answer the second one quite quickly um so uh, one thing which i i didn't actually mention was the implementation of of that uh, bot so it that project template uses uh, restify um as part of its implementation which means it will need a, an app service to uh, uh to to run uh, when you provision that and deploy it to azure so that will just need the um like say a normal app service in fact the in the bicep files there's uh, i think it uses b one of the dev test SKUs uh, to provision that app service for you 
so that is something that you need. It doesn't use it as your functions. Um, you, you definitely need that that app service. In terms of the the logic, um, in terms of uh, so where will the where will the data save? So at this the out the box, um, there's conversation history which is saved in memory. That's something that when you move to production, you're going to need to add some persistent storage. The easiest way to do that is using Azure Cosmos DB or table storage um, to save that, that conversation uh, data to. Um, but at the moment, that that bot is, is very much just it's running in memory, nothing saved uh, anywhere. So that's something that you would have to look into and implement yourself. However, saying that, Teams Toolkit does have a, a feature. So there's an add features guess wizard in there which gives you options to stand up a SQL database and Azure Functions as well in your project. So it's a bit more advanced from what I was going through today. It was very much a how do you get started. Um, but if that's something that you're really interested in, then that's something that we can definitely look to cover in another call as we start to delve into you know, going past the just getting started and creating your, your first project. Um, so you know, if any feedback like that, definitely want to hear it you know we want to uh, do kind of sessions that that are going to help you uh, progress using teams toolkit so uh, yeah just uh, get in touch absolutely that is a fantastic demo fantastic messaging